If you follow me for a while now, you know I try to bring you information that you need to know. I originally started this blog to help senior citizens learn to use technology to improve and better their lives. With the novel coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic in full swing, I wanted to use my platform to share with you the latest information on the virus and ways to help protect yourself and keep yourself safe. I'm doing this now because many of my followers and viewers fit into the category of the most vulnerable people as senior citizens. I got all the information I've included from a number of trusted medical sources, including the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, the Oregon Health and Science University, the White House Coronavirus Guidelines for America, and a few others as well. I'll link to all of these sites in the description below so you can access them if you need to refer to them later. Properly scrubbing your hands is one of the best ways to stop the spread of germs and viruses and to ensure you don't get sick yourself. If you don't have access to soap and clean water or if you're out and about at nowhere near a sink, you should carry hand sanitizer with you to protect your health. As you're no doubt aware, bottles of hand sanitizer sell out quickly during public health crises like to what we're in now. But don't worry, making your own hand sanitizer is remarkably easy. You just have to be careful that you don't mess up the recipe. Make sure that the tools you're using are properly sanitized. Otherwise, you risk contaminating the whole batch. Also, the World Health Organization recommends letting your concoction sit for a minimum of 72 hours, which is basically three days, after you're done. That way, the sanitizer has time to kill any bacteria that might have been introduced during the mixing process. Now, important note, I want to reiterate that nothing beats washing your hands. Hand sanitizer, even the real professionally made stuff that you could buy at the at your local drugstore should always be used as a last resort. I actually have two recipes for you. One is from the World Health Organization and the other is from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The first one you can make with stuff you likely already have in your cabinets or under your sink. So it's effective in emergency situations. Now don't worry if you miss any of these steps or ingredients that I list because I'm going to put them all in the description below for you so you can have them later and refer to them again if you need to. My second recipe is a little bit more complex, but it's easy to make if you have the opportunity to do some online shopping and planning ahead of time. Another important note, a lot of these items are quickly going out of stock because of high demand now during the pandemic. There's a higher chance of finding these items at a local drugstore as opposed to like a supermarket, but your first priority should be to stay indoors as much as possible to stay safe. If you have to get them, order them online if you can. You're going to need some alcohol. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, your sanitizer must be at least 60% alcohol to be effective, but it's better to get a batch of alcohol that's way above that percentage. Aim for a minimum of 75%. A bottle of 99% isopropyl alcohol is the best thing you can actually use. Your regular vodka or whiskey are too wimpy and won't cut it to create sanitizer. My first recipe is a quick gel recipe. You're going to need isopropyl alcohol, aloe vera gel, and some tea tree oil. The recipe is as follows. Mix three parts isopropyl alcohol to one part aloe vera gel. Add a few drops of the tea tree oil to give it a pleasant scent. The better recipe is a spray recipe. For that recipe, you need isopropyl alcohol, glycerol or glycerin, hydrogen peroxide, distilled water, and a spray bottle. The aloe mixture gets the job done, but aloe also leaves your skin annoyingly sticky. So the second recipe, that's the spray, is much less sticky and much more potent based on the mix that's recommended by the World Health Organization. The recipe is as follows. Mix 12 fluid ounces of alcohol with two teaspoons of glycerol. You can buy jugs of glycerol online and it's an important ingredient because it keeps the alcohol from drying out your hands and your skin. If you can't find glycerol, proceed with the rest of the recipe, but just remember to apply some moisturizer to your hands after you apply the sanitizer so your skin doesn't dry out. Mix in one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide, then three fluid ounces of distilled water. If you're working with a lower concentration solution of rubbing alcohol, say the 60% to 75%, you want to use much less water. Three quarters of your final mixture 
has to be alcohol for it to work. Load the solution into spray bottles. And remember, this isn't a gel, it's a spray. You can wet a paper towel with it as well and use it like a baby wipe. If you must, you can add in a splash of essential oil to your concoction to make it smell nice. I'm optimistic. I know that if we work together as a people and as human beings, we can get through this pandemic. I can tell you that personally because I have been sick for like two weeks and I'm finally feeling better. If you have any specific coronavirus related questions, you want to refer to the websites that I've listed in the description below so you can get all the information that you need to stay safe.